guys, midweek energy check-in as we close out this month of May 2024. What do we have going on out there? Honestly, as we move through the mid portion of our week this week and towards the weekend, things could get a little bit weird. We have a building Mercury-Uranus conjunction in the sky. Uranus is expect the unexpected, shocks, surprises, in alignment with the messenger planet. This could be some unexpected news or information that changes things somehow okay so we've got that going on and we also have a mutual reception playing out between mercury and venus mercury in the sign of taurus venus currently in the sign of gemini this is bringing a true fusion of the mercurial taurian gemini venetian energy and we're going to talk about that in our report today as well in the context of this uranian energy and a lot of these changes that are also being represented this week with the conjunction between mercury and uranus we also have a Mars Chiron conjunction and that is exact and playing out this week as well. That could be pressing on some wounds a little bit, people being triggered maybe into some like anger responses that they're projecting outwards. So another thing to be aware of as we move through the week this week, this is a more emotionally raw, vulnerable energy. So we'll talk about that as well. And we've got a lot coming together for us this week as we head towards the weekend. Let's get into our report of the day. Let's talk about how this is all working out and what it might mean for us as we move through the week. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Wednesday, May 29th, 2024. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the day where we are narrating the shift of the ages. And if you guys stick with me until the end of the video, I've done a collective tarot reading for us today as well. I like to tap the energy field from more than one modality whenever I'm doing these energy overviews just to get an alternative viewpoint energetically of what is going on out there. So we're going to do that at the end. There could be some messages in there for you. Let's get started with the astrology. You know, as I kind of said in my intro, uh, things could get a little bit weird, maybe a little bit dicey as we're moving through the week this week. This is definitely, especially Wednesday, you know, a more like a lighter, more like airy, more conversation, mental energy oriented vibe that we have going on. But there's a real strong Uranian influence that is coming into things now as well. We do have Mercury, the messenger planet, ruling the current positioner and position of Jupiter and also the Sun and Venus who are coming into conjunction right now as well. Venus conjunct the Sun is going to happen. I believe it's on Friday in alignment actually and that will be in Gemini at the same the same day the same time that Mercury and Uranus also come into exact conjunction in the sign of Taurus. We got a pretty powerful Mercury Venus mutual reception happening right now meaning Venus is in Gemini, the sign of Mercury, and Mercury is in Taurus, the sign of Venus. So their energies, they're in swapped signs, right? So their energies are fused, their energies are blended, and their energies are also being duly, highly emphasized and highlighted on the same day and throughout the course of the rest of this week, generally building to Friday, which we will have another video out for when both the Mercury Uranus alignment come exact as well as the Sun Venus alignment come exact as well. Of course, again, in their mutual receptions. So the fusion and the blend of Mercury and Venus is really the whole kind of like energetic emphasis that we have going on this week with the side dish of Mars at the or Mars conjunct Chiron in Mars's sign of Aries, which is another mm, not necessarily like the best feeling energy, but it should have kind of a powerful effect in terms of acquainting us with lessons in one way or another, whether there are lessons that we are receiving now in this energy or lessons that we are sort of graduating and being released from as this energy comes together. There's a couple different octaves that this can manifest in terms of when we're dealing with Mars at the Chiron point, but it's going to be powerful. Or it's not the Chiron point. I'm sorry, I'm saying the Chiron point. I'm talking about Chiron himself in terms of Mars and Chiron himself aligning in the sign of Aries and because it's Mars's sign, right? So this is really going to emphasize the Martian nature of this conjunction. And we'll talk about that as we move through this report. Um, to start though, I do feel like the Uranian influence and the Gemini, Taurus, Mercury, Venus blend energy is probably going to be making somewhat of an impact in our experience as we move through this energy. Things that you did not expect to hear 
probably changing things somehow pertaining to maybe something that you're working on, a partnership that you're involved in, a deal, negotiation, agreement. I do feel like this is things that have been kind of set in stone or that we thought were very stable, suddenly finding themselves in a state of flux. When we're talking about Taurus energy. That is fixed earth energy. That is like steadfast and stubborn and not moving. It's like heels dug in energy. It is the set in stone, like literally fixed earth type of energy. But Gemini energy, this is mutable air. This is transition. This is change. This is diversifying things. This is options and alternatives and like creating movement and like adapting and transitioning things from one way of being to another way of being. So when we put these two energies together, especially when we are coming out, okay, of the strong Taurian energy that is also hosting Uranus. Remember, Uranus in the sign of Taurus is not helping the Taurian energy right now stay, you know, fixed and steadfast and stable the way that it likes to. Uranus in the sign of Taurus, this is like earthquakes. This is like shaking foundations and like, you know, disrupting like the status quo that supports everything that we've like grown and built and stuff like that. So we're already in a bit of like uncertainty, maybe like shaky foundations in the context of the Taurian realms of our lives and experience in our world. And you know, wherever Taurus is right now in your personal chart, that is also where Uranus is transiting, which means that area of life is an area of life where you're likely to experience some shakeups and some changes, especially in the context of things that have been a certain way for a long period of time. And then of course, especially, you know, in alignment with the Taurus energy, partnerships, relationships, projects, resources, potential, really. It's what it's really trying to do actually is awaken us to some authentic potential and show us the resources and the ability that we have to use that to turn it into something productive or stabilizing in our material reality that like rectifies things somehow. Uranus makes the changes for us that we haven't been able to make for ourselves. It's also known as the galactic fixer and it's the great awakener as well. What this energy, this seven year transit of Uranus through Taurus is really trying to do is awaken us to where we haven't been essentially like living up to our potential because of any distortion in our perception of our own value worth potential and to help us rectify that and therefore become kind of like more um, self-producing and self-sustaining as a result of of our ability to kind of like capitalize more on our own inner resources because we perceive them in a more valuable way that translates into something that we can build, create, produce. Okay. I feel like that is kind of like the ultimate goal, especially on like a microcosm individual level when we are dealing with Uranus, transiting the sign of Taurus, awakening to our true potential and what we can build, grow, create with it to have something stable or secure or beautiful or abundant or like fulfilling in the world somehow. So then, you know, when we take that whole concept and it takes Uranus seven years to transit a sign. So this is like a seven year period in which this is happening in whatever area of our lives is in alignment with this Taurus energy. So whatever house you have Taurus in, this is the period or the area of life where for the past seven years, you've been undergoing either some conscious or unconscious, again, depending on the house, uh, shift or awakening to, you know, those deeper layer layers of authentic potential and our personal value, worth and truth in alignment with these planetary themes and what they do when they come together and the signs and all of that. Anyways, that's a tangent. Uranus and Taurus, getting back to where we are now, the Uranus and Taurus energy is being very stimulated, right? Because we, in the month of April, we had that big conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus. Moving into May, we've had all of the planets, Taurus season, lining up with Uranus and Taurus. Now we've got Mercury, the messenger planet, coming into conjunction with Uranus and Taurus, while though we've got the Sun and Venus in a conjunction and Jupiter in the sign of all these three planets in the sign of Gemini as well. So this Taurus energy, as I began saying before I went off on my Uranus Taurus tangent, is quite unstable right now in the traditional context of 
the Taurus energy, okay? How that energy operates and functions, the fixed earth. And then also when we add the mutual reception, the fact that Venus, who rules that sign, is in the sign of Gemini, which is the mutable air, which does put things in flux, which does require additional information, additional perspectives, additional viewpoints and opinions and wants to debate things and wants to sample and wants to diversify, okay? It is likely to take whatever we thought perhaps was you know, on a set course to happen and maybe just like throw things up in the literal air, okay, with all of this air sign energy. And it's likely to be in an unexpected way, surprising way, maybe the last thing you would have anticipated coming through a meeting or an interaction or a conversation or a piece of information that you also were not expecting or anticipating. These are just the flavors of things right now. And I'm telling you, commitments, agreements, projects that we've been working on, partnerships and relationships, commitments, investments, anything to do with love and money as well, romantic situations, financial situations. Um, again, it just feels like there's going to be a shift somehow that causes a desire or a need to diversify things. This is also changing our minds and like changing like our hearts also with Venus there about what it is that we want. This is changes of the heart that are simultaneously happening alongside changes in our mind, changing our mind, shifts in preferences, shifts in desires. And as a result of that, wanting to see additional options, gaining more information, more feedback, more context that takes something that we thought we were all in about and maybe just creates a desire for a little bit more space to choose, to decide, to see additional things, additional options and stuff. So sudden shifts and sudden changes could also have to do with like supply and demand about things, big financial opportunities as well. People suddenly changing their mind, backing out of things. And this is why I was saying, if you guys watched my full moon video, I was talking about, it was so weird, like to me, how this energy came into being because we had this like really like positive omen, positive alignment, big blessed conjunction with our Sag full moon, Jupiter and Venus at the last degree of the sign of Taurus, indicating some type of like magical moments or gifts or blessings or like dreams coming true and stuff like that. But it was hard for me to like go all in on that energy that was displaying such, you know, beauty and things seemingly being like so good because it's like right around the corner from that I knew this Gemini energy was coming in all these plants were going to move into Gemini and then you know we've got this Mercury Uranus conjunction and the mutual reception going on and also another thing that's happening right now is Jupiter in the sign of Gemini like I've been talking about has moved to one degree of Gemini and is now in an exact trying to Pluto retrograde in the sign of Aquarius. And that is another totally separate aspect that transit that's playing out. But that is also like doing a lot of this as well. Like that's got to be playing into things as well. Jupiter in Gemini, this is like big news, big information, gaining perspective, expanded viewpoint, but forming a trine to Pluto and Aquarius. This is like shining light into the shadows and gaining a greater purview of what's been going on in the darkness. And Pluto is retrograde as well. So this could be like literally like figuring out, you know, our own issues, getting to the root of like our own subconscious or psychological issues or, you know, things that place ways and places that we've been self-sabotaging, things that have been going on in the shadows, like of our own nature that we're learning about. And finally being able to like release and heal from with that Mars Chiron conjunction right now in the sign of Aries as well. But it's like it is Pluto's transformation and its regeneration and Mercury, you know, Jupiter, Gemini, this is all about expanding our mind. Like this is also learning something that causes a transition, that causes a transformation, that causes a change on some very deep internalized levels. And this is like a big energy. And it's also more of a collective energy. This is on a very collective level because we're talking about the outer planets. And so 
all of this, like Uranus, that's awakening, right? And then we've got Mercury there. This is like mental awakenings, figuring things out, like unexpected information that clues us in on something. And that's the same type of vibe, except on a deeper, more profound, powerful, and expansive level when we're dealing with Jupiter trining Pluto, because Pluto is an Aquarius, right? And Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, which is where Mercury is. So everything is fitting together. It's like all these aspects are all supporting one another in the pursuit of our ability to like awaken to some piece of like vital or crucial information that like helps to break us out of something, break us out of a pattern, break us out of a commitment, break us out of like an ideal perhaps even or a partnership or a relationship or something that maybe somehow was blocking our relationship with our authentic self or our authentic value or you know wasn't benefiting us in terms of moving in the direction that like universe is nudging us towards now as we are actually really all especially with the nodes transiting through the signs of Aries and Libra right now being called to kind of find ourselves again and step into a greater alignment with our higher selves and with like our true purpose and destiny a lot of us are really being activated and called towards a higher purpose right now that requires a rediscovery a redefinition and a re-identification with the authentic self i feel like the north nodes transit through the sign of aries calling and compelling us towards self-actualization and our own personal leadership era is represented in this energy as well but you know when we put this all together it just feels like this push for some true shifts in perspective, opening our mind, changes in our mind, changes in our heart that are kind of like redefining the way that we are wanting to proceed making moving forward, um, causing us to maybe want to like detach or de divest or decommit from something uh, because we just we just need to like have more time or more options or more choices or more opportunities. Lots of indecisiveness I think is coming our way as we move through the week this week and also a need to like free ourselves and loosen up somehow as well. We are going to have the moon activating. It's interesting also it's like it's not that we just have these planetary activations going on right now. The moon is also going to be activating both the Mercury Uranus square on Wednesday and then on Thursday the conjunction between Venus and the sun and the sign of Gemini so the moon by square is actually activating all of this energy over the course of this next couple of days as well moon squaring Uranus with Mercury this is also like we gotta be it, it provokes a desire to like change things up to escape from the normal routine monotony of things like a desire to just do things a little bit different experience something new feel liberated so this is definitely probably playing into things as well a need to do something different as we move through the week and that is going to be a lot of people choosing different things than they maybe thought they were going to last week somehow diversification of assets this is another way with the Taurus Gemini energy that, you know, people could be sort of like geared as we move through the week. Now, the other side of this energy that I've been talking about and that I've been referencing throughout the report, but I haven't gotten into great detail yet with is the Mars Chiron conjunction happening in Aries. This is also being aspected by the moon. It's being aspected by sextile though, not square. Aquarius on Wednesday will form, the moon in Aquarius will form a sextile to Mars in a conjunction to Chiron in the sign of Aries. So this is a, you know, emotionally raw, emotionally vulnerable energy that really could be triggering anger. The, you know, on the higher levels, this energy wants to help us and is supporting us to actively release ourselves from some type of past pain, wounding, old trauma that we've been holding on to that has actually been like self-sabotaging on some level. So therefore, don't be surprised if either within yourself or in your experience with others, you notice anger over past pains that is coming up or that is just more emphasized somehow hurt wounding like motivating our desire to maybe do something different go in a different direction these breakthroughs or breakaway breaking free energy that is also present as we're you know moving through all of the transits that are represented on this day or it could also be again like 
Chiron brings our lessons. It's the wounded healer, teacher, master archetype. A lot of times, and within the sign of Aries, this is like an active process. And Mars there, obviously, this could be like acting out. There could be, we could be engaging in or acting in, or acting out, or just like behaving in some ways that are actually kind of giving us a slap back. And like karma has a lot to do with the Chiron energy as well, specifically like in the context of breaking karmic loops and karmic cycles being released from them. So we could be coming up against ourselves in terms of us being like maybe our own worst enemy on some levels so that we can gain an awareness of what we've been doing wrong and be able to change that and make a breakthrough, release ourselves from some perpetuating pattern perhaps. So e either, you know, like earning lessons in this energy that are helping us to break ourselves out of and release ourselves from a self-sabotaging or toxic cycle of behavior or interaction with others or even interaction with ourselves. Or it could also be us coming to a point where we are finally realizing or experiencing like firsthand personally some of the wisdom that we have gained through maybe the painful experiences that we've gone through in the past and as a result of that coming to a point of healing and release because of the recognition of the lessons and like essentially us finding ourselves through the wisdom that we are acknowledging being able to be free to break through these um patterns that we may have been enmeshed with in the past that were responsible for various experiences along the Chiron themes, wounding, trauma, pain, where people have hurt us in the past and things like that. So it could be going a couple of different ways in those regards. Mars and Chiron though together, like this is spiritual warrior energy at the higher octaves. Chiron was the teacher in the mythology of all the great heroes. So we are, there is potential here. And what this energy truly is calling for us is to step into that greater alignment with our higher selves, to overcome our personal challenges through the recognition, again, of the wisdom that we've gained through our experiences, to overcome states of victimhood, align with a personal sense of self mastery, our higher selves, and our ability to release ourselves from the karmic loops associated with the subconscious programming that keeps us coming up against again and again these cycles of you know the Chiron stuff right the pain the trauma the wounding the toxic relationship dynamics whatever it is so that we can finally gain that awareness move on free ourselves and begin to move through life from a more conscious projection of like what we actually want to create with ourselves in alignment with our higher purpose as opposed to unconsciously moving through life propelled by the subconscious patterns that the universe and life is constantly reflecting back at us so that we can break ourselves free from these patterns and move forward to be more consciously creating our experience going forward. And, you know, that whole little spiel right there, that is also um, a necessary part actually of our transition into this more dominant, strong Aquarian energy that is coming in now and that will begin to root itself in our paradigm over the next 20 years as Pluto transits through Aquarius that is ultimately bridging us into this greater 2000 year age of Aquarius, the shift of the ages, hence my narration of time and space and energy and cosmic happenings on this channel. Um, Self-actualization and our ability to break ourselves free from these karmic cycles as a result of going through these heroes journeys represented through the Chiron energy, that is a fundamental part of this transitional process and why I feel like we just had a Chiron North Node conjunction in the sign of Aries. We are all in some way and a lot of people are not heeding the call right now and are going to take a while to get there. But if you're listening, something is stirring within us all on some level that is beckoning us forth and up towards a higher, greater version of ourselves that universe is activating right now so that we can step into that and help to root these Aquarian frequencies that are coming through right now that have everything to do with this process of self-actualization, 
onto the planet as we seed the new age at this point in time right now so um yeah all of that now that being said chiron energy can always be a more vulnerable raw energy feeling of personal vulnerability could be coming up throughout the day and a lot of people will be projecting this outward there could be sort of some attacks going on um blaming other people just generally not being able to or not like wanting to contain these feelings that they may be recognizing or having within themselves and as a result seeing you know their own issues perhaps in everybody else with all this gemini mercury energy and also the venus energy as well this could be a definite more commonplace experience this concept of projection um venus when we're talking about the venus mercury mutual reception this can really kind of blur the lines between ourselves and others we're talking about the twins right and venus is also the sign of other people it can be a very back and forth type of energy and we can project our thoughts onto others and they can project our thoughts onto us and as I said it can kind of like blur the line between like what is us and like what is our stuff and what is absolutely not um it's also a very relatable and social energy and loves to connect and share ideas and information and can be quite telepathic as well but in the current circumstance especially with this Mars Chiron conjunction people could just be like this is likely to be manifesting in terms of this raw vulnerable internalized like emotional energy also with the sextile to the moon and aquarius projecting out as anger onto others so something you may want to be aware of don't take it personally okay you may be picking up on stuff that other people have going on that's not even yours but because of this more blurred line energy between what is us and what is not there could just be a bit of confusion going on we also in moving into the energy of thursday the moon in pisces is going to be squaring the sun and venus in a conjunction in gemini and this is also like kind of a disorienting mental energy conflict between thoughts and feelings going on and you know miscommunications misunderstandings that can be bringing up conflict both internal and external both in our like emotional body and also the mental field when we're talking about the Piscean moon and a square to the Gemini sun and the Venus sun as well so a lot of things are likely to honestly be like lacking context and just like a bit skewed kind of distortions in the informational field especially Thursday and then with the Uranian element Mercury conjunct Uranus this is also just like weird stuff don't believe everything that you hear everything that you see you know give it a minute don't jump to conclusions about things um there's just likely to be a lot of <laughs> like off base type of information you know the Piscean energy is not all that straightforward it's not all that direct it can be very like hard to pin down and understand and the Gemini energy can be back and forth and hot and cold and here and there and all over the place and yes and no and up and down you know so um there's that right um tensions and relationships with the moon squaring venus and the sun as well or negotiations or agreements business deals no one knows what's really going on no one knows if they're really going through with it anymore like probably just not the greatest day to force a commitment to happen conflicts between ideas and beliefs for sure arguments debates confrontations people saying like shocking off the wall things of course remember this gemini energy really likes to go back and forth about stuff and with the square people could be just not on the same page all of a sudden in a way that like maybe you just weren't anticipating so weird day on thursday we're actually moving into probably an even weirder week weekend um friday of course is the mercury uranus exact conjunction with the sun and venus an exact conjunction as well and jupiter will be in the exact trine to pluto retrograde in the sign of aquarius lots of aquarian energy big gemini energy but weird venus energy and them all in this sort of like ball of fusion together probably uh should be interesting okay to say the least um also of course people are probably acting out like the victim abuser narrative uh with the chiron mars energy going on unexpected messages and information a desire to change and people definitely changing their minds so don't you know be be as open as you can and don't expect things to be 
set in stone, you know, any plans that are being made right now, try to be adaptable. Things are likely to just kind of be a bit all over the place. And that's just how it's looking right now. So that's what I'm going to say, you guys, about the astrology as we're moving through the week this week. Let's talk now about the tarot message that we had coming out. This message is so reflective, I feel like, of what we have playing out in terms of the astrology. First of all, we've got the three of swords in reverse on the back of the deck. This is talking about like healing or a phase of active healing or whatever's going on in the context of what's playing out this week for the ultimate goal of healing something somehow or that's the consequence of whatever's going on and we know that we have Mars and Chiron together which is also seeking to help us heal from things and break out of cycles that have been leading to like any wounding that we've been experiencing right so that's interesting that we've got that energy coming out on the back of the deck now in terms of our message you know this is <laughs> right in alignment I feel like with the energy that's playing out right now as well we've got the hierophant coming through this is Taurian energy it does represent commitments and stability it's also the higher plan okay some type of Things are very much happening in divine alignment right now. Uranus, look, we've got the Uranian energy right here too. We've got the Tower energy and we've got the Taurian energy. This also, this Three of Pentacles, this is the Gemini Taurian energy as well. This is people working together towards a common goal, making plans, like setting an agenda, figuring out how they're going to collaborate um, in terms of building or producing something. And we've got the Three, and that, that's in reverse with the Tower and then the Four of Pent or the four of cups which is generally about like being disinterested like having a state of apathy like not really caring um but with it in reverse this is like accepting something embracing something finally be being open to something finally being willing to like take a look at something to you know take a second look maybe to look at an alternative option or perspective or to maybe um like embrace an opportunity that we weren't seeing or acknowledging before somehow. When I put all this energy together, though, you guys, it does look like some type of commitment or some type of an investment or some stable situation or some type of authority even. Um, it's like not working out or there needs to, like we need to like go back to the drawing board or there's like a shift in the collaboration itself or the way that things are coming together or the plans that we've been making or there's changes of plans going on and you know then there's the tower like happening suddenly right catching us off guard surprise lightning strikes the tower things are not going the way that we expected and, and had agreed to and had talked about and then we've got this four of cups in reverse right it's like oh because I'm finally like looking at another opportunity that I hadn't been acknowledging before or I am embracing a piece of information or I am acknowledging something within myself that I had been refusing to feel before or you know I'm having this hunch or this like intuitive knowing that is coming to me that I was not open to before but I can't like shake it and it's coloring my viewpoint and perspective of things and you know actually like this is what I need to do to heal on some level or the process of going through this process is leading to healing on some level I don't know, you guys, but it's looking like, um, you know, and it's happening in divine order as well. Like it's part of a higher plan. Like there's a, um, you know, the hand of God being very instrumental in the changes that are happening right now. This could be like, I don't know, it makes me feel like the people that we've been working with, there could be shifts so in like the, the members of your team or of your group that you have been a part of or it could happen suddenly or just like the blueprint shifting somehow. I don't know. But with the four of cups in reverse, it's because of some new detail or some new opinion or some new feeling or some new opportunity. The cup like right like this is a this is a opportunity coming out of thin air or a message or you know something that we could possibly receive that is being presented to us but uh, an unwillingness to look at it a unwillingness to embrace or accept it like the apathy and not caring about it but with it's in reverse it's like oh well suddenly oh I noticed that I've got that option as well and I'm much more open to it now than maybe in the past I don't know so that's what we got for the tarot today you guys let's get one more card now a synchronicity card 
figure out what one final piece of additional information or insight might be to help us move through this week. What do we need to know in the context of, right, the hierophant of this Uranian energy? It literally says God's the boss, right? And the hierophant, like the high holy man, like that was the first card that we had coming out, like divine order, God's the boss. Um, whatever changes are going on this week, you guys, like it's Uranus. This is the galactic fixer. Uranus makes the changes for us. We haven't been able to make for ourselves. Don't like, you know, resist the Uranian energy if it's coming into your life, you know, this week. And that would be all of these things that I've been talking about, like a sudden, you know, someone calling you and telling you something that like changes the plan that you thought you wanted to go through with or you know an investment or something along the Tory lines like something we were going to spend money on or we were planning to do getting another piece of information and realizing like oh wait maybe I don't want to go through on that all the way there's a level of you know divine order that is going on here so God's the boss it says, who then is that faithful and wise steward? Luke 12, 42. You must do your job joyously and faithfully in the knowledge that God is your boss. Your subconscious will then respond and promote you and remove obstacles to your success. Have a constructive vision. Be faithful to your vision. Show respect for authority and you will be prospered along all lines. So that's the advice right now, you guys. And I do feel like, especially, you know, with the Jupiter-Pluto trine as well, doing the right thing, you know, staying on the straight and narrow, like we don't want to be trying to get away with anything. Like this is secrets uncovered. The more that you can act in alignment with what you know your higher self would expect from you, I feel like the greater the rewards are going to be as we move through this period of time that is calling us into like the best version of ourselves. And understanding in the in the midst of whatever flux could be going on this week whatever diversification might be underway that there is divine order that is instrumental in all of this and God's the boss so that's what I have to say today you guys message from the stars message from the cards I hope you guys liked the video if you did like it please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel share it with your friends if you think they would be interested in this type of astrology content as well leave me comments you guys I really appreciate knowing what's going on with you out there if you are having experiences that are in alignment with what I'm talking about in these videos please let me know in my comment section below I am very grateful for all of you thank you so much again Again, if you want to know what's on this whiteboard, I have a Facebook page that I post these images in and that's where you can find them linked in my description box below uh, and come back with me on Friday. You guys, like I said, we're going to have a very interesting weekend coming up. We've got two exact conjunctions happening same day, personal planets, Mercury, Uranus and Venus with the sun. So things should be as I said, things should get a little bit interesting and I will be here to talk about it. You should be here too. You don't want to miss it. I will see you next time, guys. Have a very beautiful midweek and until then, bye.